Hello, I'm Dr. Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and assisted conception in London. Today I'm going to talk about a slightly different subject. And this is about use of clomiphene and letrozole in assisted conception and IVF. So let's go back and see what is clomiphene. Clomiphene has completed 50 years and has been used for a very long time. It is a selective estrogen receptor modulator and it has anti-estrogenic activities. So what did it do? It occupies the hypothalamic receptors for a longer period than estrogen. And it starts the process of release of GnRH through blocking the negative feedback. Thus, it increases FSH and LH. And this is a very important point to remember that unlike gonadotrophins on their own, clomiphene releases both FSH, helps the release of both FSH and LH. Now, what do we do with standard IVF? In standard IVF, we give more gonadotrophins, we create more oocytes, more embryos. The long protocol in the luteal phase suppression tends to give seems to give more follicles and more oocytes and in fact there is more ovarian hyperstimulation when it's compared to the use of clomiphene and gonadotrophins. Now is there a role of clomiphene in poor responders and the answer is yes. What we know from studies is that if you use clomiphene in low, do in low dose gonadotrophins the results seem to be very much the same. Also what we know is that if you have seen my earlier talk that women with poor reserve tend to require a lower dose of gonadotrophins to recruit follicles. The cost becomes lower and even though they produce fewer oocytes, pregnancy rates tend to be the same. And those of you who want to use clomiphene with gonadotrophins and assisted conception will see that in certain cases you will see a, a significantly different benefit of using clomid with gonadotrophin. Now we come to the second drug which is slowly making a comeback after having been blamed for causing abnormalities and so many other things of letrozole in IVF. Is there a role of letrozole? Letrozole is very different to clomiphene. It inhibits aromatase enzyme and blocks the conversion of androgens to estrogens. It increases ovarian androgens and in addition the circulating estrogen is less. So what does the pituitary hypothalamic setup look at. It sees there is low estrogen and it starts increasing FSH. Very different from how clomiphene works. It is a rate limiting uh, enzyme and it's, there is an inhibition of its activity without switching off the negative feedback mechanism. We know that in women with breast cancer, estrogen levels seem to be closer to the physiological level when you have given Letrozole. Now, letrozole has been used in IVF, and there is data of using letrozole for five days between day two to day six or day three to day seven with gonadotrophin in normal and poor responders, and results seem to be good. Its role in good responders, we, we do not seem to have a huge amount of data regarding it. We know that we can lower costs. And also, the results tend to be very much the same. The surprising thing is that we are learning something more about when we use letrozole in IVF. We know that intra-ovarian androgen levels tend to increase. And as the ovarian androgen levels tend to increase, it is, it is believed that this may further augment the follicles for FSH secretion. So it's, the granular cells tend to be a bit more sensitive and that may 
trigger them to act when the FSH grows. This is very similar to the action when testosterone was used in certain patients to increase the androgen levels. Maybe in some of these cases, we may be able to use this concept of trying to activate more follicles, trying to uh, increase the you know, expression of uh, FSH and make the follicles start growing better. The second thing which often we uh, should realize is that letrozole increases integrin levels. Those of you who do the ERA testing will realize that there are certain markers of endometrial receptivity and integrin is one of them. We also know that in women with repeated IVF failures, integrin levels are reduced. We also know that when you give a huge amount of FSH, if you co cause supraphysiological rise of E2, endometrial receptivity may be hampered and you may lose the implantation window. What does letrozole do? Letrozole, when used in combination, lowers E2 levels and may improve the implantation window. This is something which you have been learning and what I would suggest is that it may be time to move away from the aggressive stimulation protocols, protocols where you give 450, 600 of FSH, and move towards milder protocols, move towards protocols that allow you to work closer with nature and not aggressively stimulate these ovaries. Once again, these are a few of the talks which we're reviewing from the journals and using it to update our current knowledge. Thank you for watching it. Please share this page, like it and rate the page and follow us on YouTube. I aim to put more and talks and lectures on YouTube. Thank you very much.